Hey, this is Eran Stern, and in this tutorial, I will help you to deal with a common problem using After Effects Tracker when an object comes out or into the frame. In order to illustrate what I mean, I have here a shot that I took in one of my favorite places in the world, Wundelpark in Amsterdam. And this shot called Lady Bag, because it is a lady that goes with a bag let me just drag it into the make new comp icon we will switch to full res go into full view and just create ourselves a real nice ramp review in order to show what we have here and you see this lady is holding a bag and some kind of i think a trash in the hand and as you see she's going out of the frame and into the frame which means she's going from somewhere here into the frame and leaves the frame and if we want to track this data it will be quite a mission inside After Effects because once we reach this point or before this point After Effects tracker will get confused and will not know what to do. So let me show you the solution I came up with but first we need to track this shot as best as we can so right click anywhere on the shot and choose track motion. This will get us into the layer view and here we should find a nice contrast place to track the data. So let me just move a little bit into the frame. Let's zoom into our video and I think that we will take the tracker data and place it here in this point of the hair. It should work because it's a nice contrast shot that the tracker can see through all the available pixels. So let me just zoom out a little bit and let's just track forward from this point. And as you can see, this is of course a decent track point, but once this lady reached the end of the frame, the tracker got confused and just holds in place. So what we want to do now is identify the last good area that the tracking has. In order to do so, let's select the lady bag dot mov in the timeline and hit u in the keyboard this will reveal all the keyframe information that the tracker holds and let's just zoom into the timeline and just scrub back until we will see where is the last good available tracker information and i think it's somewhere here in this area so what i want to do now is basically select all these keyframes and just delete them Instead, we will use an expression that will tell After Effects to continue in the same direction that it already calculate. And it will do it using the last two keyframes that holds a good information from our tracker. So holding down Alt or Option if you're working on a Mac and click the stopwatch and let's just type in loop out, open parentheses and then let's write the word continue and close parentheses this will tell after effects to use the delta for the speed and direction of the last two keyframes and create a matching linear motion at the same velocity so if we will just scrub our timeline we will see that it is indeed working so it will take the last two keyframes and continue our track point outside of the screen of course, we can do it the other way around. So we can scrub to the beginning of the shot. And now let's also make sure that we will see it here in the timeline. So now somewhere around here, we need to analyze backwards. So let's just press the analyze backwards. After Effects Tracker will do its best. And since there is no information here, we need to do the same for the other side, meaning we have to identify where is the last two good keyframes and I think it's over there. So let me just select all of these keyframes and just delete them. Now, just to make sure that this will work, let's highlight the expression and change the word out to the word in. So now After Effects can calculate the in point using the first two keyframes and with their delta and velocity, it can generate the tracking point information. But of course we want the information to be available on both sides meaning once she gets into the frame and once she gets out and this expression can only deal with either 
So I found a way to do it using a condition inside the expression. But first I have to thank my dear friend Jersey Drozda Jr. aka Maltanan who is an expression wizard and using his kind help I managed to came up with a solution. And the solution is very simple. So first let's highlight the expression and go to the beginning and let's define a term for it. So if and open parentheses time and now you have to look in your clip and check where is the time that you want the loop in continue to be active. In my case it's before one second. So I will write down if time is less than one inside the time you can only define full seconds so just make sure to write the right seconds number according to your clip in my case of course time is less than one and then we will close the parentheses and we will ask after effects to loop in and of course if it is not else then we will tell after effects to loop out which means that after one second after effects will use the same expression to loop out so i will write the word continue and close parentheses and let's choose enter in order to accept our expression and now if we will just zoom out a little bit and just check it we will see that before one we are using the loop in continue expression and after one second the tracker continue in the same direction. Now if you find that you don't like the way this tracker extrapolates to the right or to the left and see in this example here let me just zoom in a little bit you will see that our tracker extrapolates a little bit and goes at the wrong direction a little bit down instead of in the same perspective something like this. So you can always go to the last keyframe and modify it because this tracker used the delta between the last two keyframes. In order to demonstrate, let me just close the expression for one moment and make sure that I will select the last keyframe and only the last keyframe. And then I will change the height value to something a little bit closer to what I think it should be. Something I think like this. And then I will re-establish this expression and if we will check it now we will see that the track point now uses the same direction in order to leave the screen. We can also check the other way once she's getting into the frame and we will see that also here we should adjust a little bit the tracking data. So let me just make sure that I will see the first keyframe let me again just disable the expression momentarily holding down control or command and just scrub these numbers a little bit downward re-enable the expression and now i think we've got it the right direction so now we can add a null object and connect the tracker information to it and then marry it to some fun elements in order to really sell this scene so let's do it let's have some fun Okay, so we can close the tracker controls and we can also close the layer view because we will work from now on in the composition view. Let's make sure that we can still see this tracker because we need to connect it to our null object and let's right click here and choose new null object and this null object will hold our tracker data. So I will call it tracker data. Now I will hit P in order to see its position properties. I want to make sure that I can see both of them together. So let me just change the interface a little bit. And now let's hold down Alt or Option and enable an expression to our tracker data. And just drag the pick whip into our feature center of our lady bag. Now you can press Enter to accept our expression. You can close the lady bag layer. And you can also zoom out in order to check that the tracker is indeed holding its current values into this null object. From now on, this is a child's play, with meaning that if you want to connect elements to this, you only have to parent them into the tracker data. Let me just show you how easy it is with a few elements I have here. So first, let me introduce you to Vondi. And Vondi is the Wundelpark robot 
that always keeps the place clean and tight. And this is how it looks. It's a real robot. I know you can't believe it, but it is indeed. So what I want to do now is just make sure that Vondi has a little bit more of an atmosphere to him. So I will make sure he's still selected and under layer, I will add an outer glow to him. I will open the outer glow parameters, change the colors to something like maybe a bright cyan and let's just change the size here to give it a little bit of a glowish look and this is just the way I like Vondi to be. Now we can also scale it a little bit down because it doesn't need to be so big so maybe I think around 44-45% it's good. Let me just make sure it is on top of her because he needs to remind her to Take this bag and find a trash bin and just trash it inside. So he must follow her wherever she goes. So we need to parent Vondi to our tracker data and you can check that it is working. So Vondi is going out of the frame and into the frame exactly as expected. Now I don't know if you know but Vondi is a sophisticated robot and he always fly in and out in the air meaning that I want to wiggle him a little bit in the Y axis only and I don't want to wiggle him all over the place because I don't want him to lose the connection with the tracking data. So in order to do so let's give him a quick expression. Let's isolate the position by typing P and let's enable an expression to the position by holding down Alt or Option and let's write the following x will equal value because we want to keep the same value of x and then we will open the bracket and close bracket with the zero value inside and let's hit return and now we will define that y will be equal to wiggle and let's say that it will be 2 comma 20 and close the parentheses and then open a square bracket and then again zero close square bracket semicolon and then in the end we will open square bracket and say x comma y close square brackets and this should make the wiggle only appear in the y axis so as you see one day is wiggling in the y axis but now is covering our lady so at the end of the Y expression, let's add minus 100 pixels and it will just raise it on the Y axis 100 pixels. And now you can see he's actually flying around, which makes him very natural robot as you come to think about it. And we can also add another thing in order to close this exercise. And let's use this balloon and drag it into the timeline and this balloon is the result of the nudging Vondi, which means that she got it. She understood that she must find a bin in order to trash this little bag. So first, let me just change the anchor point of this layer to the bottom left. And we will scale it down something like this. And we will place it in the right position. I think that this should be the right position for it. And then of course we should parent it to our tracker data. So now everything is working together. But I think that we should scale this balloon from I said 2 seconds to maybe 3 seconds. So here in 2 seconds let me just record the keyframe in the value of 0. And let's just move a couple of frames and just raise it to something like this. And also let's make it an easy ease keyframe by using shift and F9. And I will also select the graph for it and just make sure that we will raise it a little bit before it will reach its place. So it will be a little bit bigger and then it will settle in. So now I think that we have all the information that we need in order to view our final RAM preview of everything working together. And we will see how easy it was to track elements that goes in and out of the screen and connect them, our wonderful robot who keeps Wundel Park clean. And we know that it is working because our lady thinks that she must find a trash bin in order to get rid of the bag in her hand.
Now that we finished with our lesson, I want to invite you to stay with me additional two more minutes in order to show you a new product, which I'm sure you will like. So until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net saying, check this one out. The Creative Cow Master Series presents Motion Design with Adobe After Effects. Powerful techniques to kickstart your work. Although this trailer looks like a lot of 3D stuff, actually there is only one layer here, which is a 3D layer. And you guessed it right, it is the cloud layer of course. And from the RAM preview you see that we've created a lovely graphics with two easy steps that we will use in between our jumper. And also the specular reflection, we will choose a higher number here. So this is really brings up all the details in our liquid. Hosted by Aaron Stern. Let's come up and change the birth rate, which means how many this effect will create. And let's change it to 0.5 because we don't want so many. So now this one goes out and the other one comes in and it's exactly what I want. I think that this just one shape layer will make our logo and our design looks much, much, much more cooler. And you see the motion blur is really holding this shot very well, so it looks very good to my eye. More than five hours of fun lessons and serious AE chops. Seven real-world projects explore the depths of After Effects. In-depth training for beginners or advanced users. There's always something more to learn.